up? Welcome to my kitchen. And today we're gonna to be talking about acorns. Who eats acorns? Why should you eat acorns? And how you can pick acorns up off of the ground and turn them into acorn flour, which can be used for baking. Acorns have been eaten all over the world for thousands of years, everywhere that oak trees grow, from Japan to Korea to Europe and North Africa and North America. And they've been a staple food source for many, many cultures the world over. So why would you wanna eat acorns? Acorns are super nutritious. They are high in protein, they're high in vitamin A and vitamin C. Acorns can be made into acorn coffee, which is a delicious drink that I've been experimenting with the past few years. They can also be ground into a flour and made into acorn breads and acorn pancakes and basically anything that you could throw cornmeal into can be replaced with acorn meal. Also, acorns are a free abundant food source that is literally falling from the sky I just went around my neighborhood this year and I raked acorns out of people's yards and they thanked me and I gathered them up in bags and I was like, great, free foods. All right, so let's get to the meat of the video and we're gonna talk about acorn processing. How do we eat these things? So the first step is gonna be to go out and harvest them. I can give you a couple tips on that. Then you're gonna bring them back to your home and dry them. After that, you're gonna shell them. And then there are many different ways you can go about this, but I will be exploring one method for leaching them, which is the process by which we're gonna remove the bitter tasting tannins so that these taste absolutely delicious. All right, so let's talk about harvesting acorns. So like I said, there's a ton of different oak varieties, um, all of which are gonna have a somewhat similar process of how to leach out the tannins and how to dry them. Um, but different types of acorns have different amounts of fat and oil and protein and that's going to affect the drying time and it's going to also affect the amount of tannins in the acorn is going to affect how long you need to leach them for before they are no longer bitter. So there's a little bit of room for play in this depending on what variety of oak species you get and you may want to do a little bit of extra research if you are not using the type of acorns that I'm using. Um, I have a couple of examples here. I have these beautiful white oak acorns that fell right in my backyard. We have a nice oak tree out there. And I've got these red oak acorns. They're not native here in Vancouver, BC, but they're growing in abundance because people plant these, I guess, as an ornamental. These ones are very, very bitter. So bitter that I would be hard pressed to even eat an entire nut raw. And these white oak acorns are actually far less bitter. When you go out, You'll notice that acorns start falling from the trees, uh, sometimes as early as mid to late September. Um, a lot of people will say that you shouldn't harvest from the, like the first falling of acorns, you should avoid that. Because that tends to get hit really hard by a little species called acorn weevils. Acorn weevils, you can tell if they've already been inside an acorn, because they'll leave this little round, tiny little round pin shaped like a prick sized exit hole. This is the first year that I've harvested acorns in a city and not in a forest. And I didn't actually have an issue with acorn weevils. So you might find that that really varies based on where you live. Um, there's a few other key things to look for, however, and I have some examples for you down here. Um, you probably want to avoid acorns that are cracked, especially if they're already cracked when you find them lying on the ground, because likely the nut meat is going to be a bit rotten on the inside. Um, you also want to look at the cap, the very top of the acorn, uh, where it attaches to the cap. If it still has a cap on it, just leave it. And if there's any cracking or damage up here to where the acorn kind of like receives its nutrients from the tree, that's probably not going to wind up being a good acorn. So you can just avoid those. You might find some acorns that have actually started to sprout. This one started to sprout and it's looking healthy. But if you find acorns that have started to sprout that the sprout is dead, that's another one to just throw out and leave on the ground. Another method is to apparently float them all in water just after harvesting and acorns that rise to the surface and float are bad acorns. So let's talk about drying these suckers. Um, if you bring a big bag of acorns home and forget about them even for a few days and they're just sitting stacked, they might feel dry on the outside, but they actually are full of moisture and you're gonna have big mold issues which could ruin your whole batch. So be sure to immediately spread them out on a tray or a cookie sheet and put them in kind of a warm, dry spot, not a humid spot, so that they can dry slowly over time. If you want, you can use your oven on a very low setting to dehydrate, or you can use a food dehydrator. If you dry them at above 65 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll actually denature the starch. So if you're trying to make acorn flour, you won't be able to make a very good flour that way. Also, if you dry them too fast, 
uh, you may find that they're more difficult to shell. There's a little inner fuzzy sheath here to the nut meat. Don't know if you can see that there, which becomes more di difficult to remove if you dry them too quickly. And this is actually one of the most bitter parts of the nut. So you do want to find a way that you can remove that. On the contrary, if you dry them too slowly, you are going to have mold and maybe rotting issues. So your goal is to find a nice, consistent heat place where they can sit. Um, sometimes for a couple weeks, or if you're using a dehydrator, it might be far less. Acorns are much easier to shell when they're dry because the nut meat actually shrinks down a little bit so that when you crack the shell open, it's much easier to pry out. As far as shelling goes, there's tons of different methods. If you have a huge back, batch of acorns and you're really into it, you can get like a professional like nut cracker tool. I have been using a little rubber mallet, but you can also use like a stone, you know, like a, a rock on the ground and just smash them open with a rock or a log. Cracking the acorn is as easy as that. You know, like I'm fine with kind of sitting here and doing this. These are healthy acorns. They're a little bit darker in color just because they've been sitting longer. You'll notice that when they're really fresh, they're gonna have kind of like a creamy, milky look to them. And then as they sit longer, they're gonna turn a bit of a darker color. So here's an example of a red oak acorn that's just been sitting and drying. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's totally healthy. It's just changed colors. And it's also gonna get much, much harder. I've also like recommend getting your friends to help you with this project because this is a huge project depending on how many acorns you get. I run nature programs out in the forest with kids and I harvested a bunch of acorns and all my kids are helping to crack them. And then I'm gonna bring acorn flour back in for us to make acorn tea and like baked goods during the winter. So get your friends to help you. All right, let's talk about leaching. So this is the most sort of temperamental part of processing acorns. Um, there's several different ways that you can leach acorns. You can do a cold leach using only cold water. You can do a hot leach uh, using boiling, which is much quicker, but that's again going to denature the starch. So that's great if you want to use them for, you know, if you're not using it for flour and you're throwing them into a chili or something. Um, but for all other purposes, you want some kind of a cold leach. And then there's an additional method using lye or wood ash, um, which helps to pull the tannins out as well. So cold leaching is gonna be my choice because it's gonna preserve the starch and all of the nutrients that I wanna have in my flour. I've done it a few different ways. In the past, one trick that I've used is I've taken actually the whole nuts and I've just put them in like a mesh bag and I've actually stuck them in the back of the toilet, like the fresh water compartment. Um, you might wanna clean it out first, but this is actually just like a water reservoir that every time you flush the toilet is filled with clean water. Beware though, if you're having guests over, when they flush the toilet, the bowl is gonna fill with like this reddish, yellowish liquid, um, which has been colored by the tannins. So yeah, strange as it may sound, I have used the toilet method in the past and made delicious acorn coffee by boiling the whole nuts like this. This year, I'm going to try a method that was, um, that is modeled after a traditional hoopa method, whereby the acorns are ground into a meal Traditionally, it would have been done with a mortar and pestle. Um, and then they're poured out into a shallow depression in the sand and then water is poured over them. Like running water is poured over them and it leaches down into the sand. And supposedly using this method, you can get the same work done in a few hours that would normally take several weeks. The modern equivalent to this is I'm going to take my shell and dried acorns. I'm going to throw them in a high powered blender and make them into a flower, and then I'm going to run water through them. So this is a Vitamix blender. I have a love-hate relationship with it. It doesn't actually belong to me, and it's very, very, very loud, but it's really good at what it does. But I do wanna warn you, I mean, the great thing about the Vitamix is that the blades are not actually sharp. So there's no risk here of me damaging the blade. In the past, I have put acorns, fully dry acorns into a coffee grinder. That coffee grinder, could not grind coffee after that. It was completely trashed. Um, so one cautionary note is you wanna put your acorns in your high powered blender with water, and that's gonna really save your blade. Let's put some of these in. All right, let's try that. 
As you can see, the um, some of the little odd bits of shell are actually rising to the top in the water here. You can just pick those off. This thing is loud, so I'm gonna stuff some toilet paper in my ears. Old school rock concert style. Not to 50! <sighs> so have a look. I have what looks like acorn sludge. The next step that we're gonna jump into is actually putting this in a big um, sack and pouring water through it. Welcome to the percolation station. Over here, I have a smaller bucket um, braced on two slots of wood on top of a larger five gallon bucket. No, I am not sponsored by Home Depot or Canadian Tire. Um, yeah, I read about this method of percolation leaching. Again, this was inspired by um, an Aboriginal poopa method of leaching the acorns into sand and pouring water through them. But I read about this in a blog post by a guy named Abe Lloyd, who lives down in Bellingham. So he's in my bio region. And so I'll just big shout out to Abe. I will post his blog below. And as far as I'm concerned, this is an experiment. This is my first time trying this method. So Abe had a lot of success using a flannel sack to allow his um, water to percolate through the acorns. I didn't have a flannel sack. So I'm trying it with a potato sack and a pillowcase. And notice that my potato sack is made of a heavy duty material here and it's folded over the top and I've actually tied it onto my bucket because I didn't want it to go falling through the bucket into the water. So as you can see, I have a slow trickle happening here through my two layers of filter. What I'm gonna do is add some more acorn flour from my other jar here. And then I'm gonna add some more water just to add a little bit of weight to the top. But I don't wanna add all of this because I'm afraid it will totally overwhelm my system here. I don't think I have capacity for this much more. Yeah, <laughs> it's mostly water on the top, but. So my job for the next, I don't know, couple of hours probably, will just be to pop in every once in a while, check the water level and keep adding water to the top tasting the flour and seeing if that bitterness is gone. Hello and welcome back. It's been maybe 30 seconds for you, but for me, it's been a few days. Um, as you can see, it's a beautiful day. I've just finished leaching my red acorn flour and I ended up being able to leach it with about four of these buckets of water. The water in the last bucket is a lot more clear than the water in the second to last bucket and the first bucket was much more yellowish. So. Um, this is definitely something that I feel like a person could accomplish within a day. Um, I just ran into some scheduling challenges with work days. Yeah, the acorn flower has come out beautifully. It looks like a sludge right now. It tastes really mild. Uh, there's a little bit of a nuttiness to it, a very, very slight, almost indetectable amount of bitterness, um, and it tastes a lot like flour. And at this point, the process is to actually, we're gonna spread this out on cookie sheets and we're going to dehydrate it. So I've scooped my acorn meal into these three different trays. As you can see here, there's actually still a fair bit of moisture in it, um, which is maybe a good reason to go for a flannel sack filter instead of a potato sack. I think the potato sack just retains a lot of moisture in it. So if I really wanted to, I could put it into like a cheesecloth bag and like swing it around my head and kind of spin the water off. But I think it'll be just as easy at this point to just throw it in the dehydrator and let the dehydrator pull the moisture out of it. All right, I've got my trays of acorn mush, and now I'm going to put them into the oven on a very low setting, like food dehydrator style, and I'm gonna dehydrate them. All right, so I've dehydrated my acorn flour. It's so beautiful, um, but it's now kind of gathered together in clumps. So my final step here is going to be to put it in the blender, give it a quick spin, um, and then I'm actually gonna pop mine into the freezer. You could also use the fridge. Uh, the main thing to know about acorn flour and storing it is that it does have some volatile oils, which can go rancid on you quicker if you don't store it in a cool place. So that's my plan. Let's see how it turns out. Oh wow, it's so soft and powdery and beautiful. Check that out. Look at this. Absolutely beautiful.
So this is what I got out of about two thirds of my harvest. I have another batch leaching now. Um, and it really makes you realize, like, I won't treat this as I would treat my normal flower. This is super precious. It makes you realize how much work um, people have gone through throughout the ages to develop these technologies and to put food on the table. And just some closing thoughts, you know, as you go out onto the landscape and you're harvesting acorns, um, just make sure to be aware of where you're harvesting. If you're living in a place where you're like me, you're a white settler, someone who whose ancestors have been colonizers, make sure that you're not harvesting in a place where you're going to be taking away a uh, food source for people who have traditionally survived on acorns and actually need those. Um, and it's also important to think of the animals and not harvesting more than you need because also the deer and the squirrels and all sorts of things, the birds are also going to be e eating the acorns. If I were to do this project again, I would change a few things. I would say the potato bag worked, but it could have been better. I would probably use a flannel or a linen sack instead, um, just to make sure I'm not losing some of those valuable starches that kind of like get stuck to the sides of the potato bag and I found it didn't drain super well. I would do it all in one day. All of the leaching can happen in the time frame of a day. And it was only my own busy kind of hectic schedule and disorganization which caused me to leave it outside and be adding more layers of water in the morning and evening before and after work. So it's totally a valid acorn leaching method. And I think that grinding it into a meal and doing this style of cold leaching percolation will preserve the most nutrients for you and it will also take less time. Whereas if you're soaking them in changes of water, a lot of people do that method. Um, it can take three days up to 10 days, depending on how bitter your acorns are. And I managed to do red oaks, which are notoriously super bitter in what could have been just one day's time. Enjoy!